Let's talk about converting a team managed project into a company managed project. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into today's topic. Before we get started, I want you to consider why we would convert a team managed project that works so well into a company managed project. And there's a couple of reasons that I wanna share with you before I show you the technique. I wanna explain the why, because this is actually very, very important. You can succeed with a team managed project, but there's some limitations. And I think that these limitations warrant enough justice for you to move and consider utilizing a company managed project. So let's start off with why do we even have a team managed project to begin with? Well, the simple answer is out of the box, when you are setting up Jira, and this really goes for teams that are kind of new to Jira, but when you're setting up Jira for the first time, a team managed project is the default setting and the default configuration that Jira kind of, they almost push you in that direction. So you really don't have an option to a certain degree because you just don't know better, right? But these projects are not bad. They work, they're very efficient and they work great for small teams. But we have a limitation because of the inherent nature of how team managed projects work and their ease of configuration, their ease to get in, which is really good. It's thumbs up for companies that are just want to jump into Jira quickly, be productive and efficient with Jira quickly. But the second that they realize that they want to work collaboratively, and I've never seen a company that doesn't want to work collaboratively with other teams, the moment that that happens, the moment that they expect their Juras to work together or they want to scale Agile a little bit, don't have to go full safe, just want to, you know, have like a little scrum of scrums, team managed projects start to fail really, really quickly. So that's reason number one why having a team managed project is not good because of their properties, the way they work, every issue lives inside of that project. So you can't share, like an Epic can't have a story that belongs to another team. These projects are also not visible in the advanced roadmap. So if you're a premium Jira subscriber, you can't leverage these projects inside of a global, bigger master plan. So there's some limitations. Now from an administrative perspective, Jira also has some limitations there. While it is very, very easy to configure, it's very, very easy to set up, add new fields, add new issue types, make modifications to the workflow. All of those configurations are siloed which you might not think is a bad thing, but what if you have 20, 30 Jira projects? What if your company is like a three, 4,000 person company and you just have a lot of Jira projects? Well, if you ever have to make a change, like let's just say that we want everybody to have a specific custom field that we want everybody to fill out for global metrics within the company, well, you gotta go to 20 to 30 different Jira projects and add that field manually to those projects because the configurations are very siloed to just that team managed project. So the solution, like with the first problem, is to move over to a company managed project. And so there's could probably a lot more reasons, but those are the two big ones. Those are the two common ones that I always find where folks that are using Jura, specifically a team managed project, they run into this limitation. They run into, it's great at the beginning, it's great when you're just getting started, but very quickly into your tenure of using Jura, you realize that mm, Jira is maybe not the right tool, but it's not Jira that's not the right tool. It's just the type of project you set up. And what breaks my heart even more is that there's a lot of other YouTubers out there that make Jira videos on how to use Jira, but almost all of them recommend you use a team managed project. And I think this is a little bit short sighted because as you can see, there's a couple of limitations here that just make it worth upgrading to a company managed project. So with the reasons why aside, now let me go show you how to actually do this in Jira. It's not that hard. It is just a very repetitive and mundane process. So I'm just gonna show you the step that you have to go through because you have to do a couple things correctly in order for this to work correctly. So it's not a simple like, hey, let's just make it a company managed project. Because first, the first thing I wanna start off with is a big huge disclaimer is there is no way for you to like click a button and say, okay, you are now a company managed project. That's not gonna fly in Jira. That's not a functionality. At last thing though, if you're listening, maybe hook a brother up because uh, that would be a really cool feature to just hit a couple buttons, 
and make make it convert but that's not an option here so what options do we have well let's jump into jira and take a look okay so inside of jira i am inside of a team managed project and you know that you're in a team managed project because it says team managed here but what you want to do is you want to create a new company managed project now this is a little annoying because what happens is you essentially need to create two copies of the same project the problem is you can only have one unique name and key for that project. So you almost have to add a little bit extra to the company managed project to indicate that it's a company managed project. So to the key, I typically add a C at the very, very end of the key to indicate that it's a company managed. And for the project name, I'll also add company at the end, just so that people know that it's the same. Now we can rename these, but we have to do the migration first and then delete the team managed project and then we can go back and change it because once that project is permanently deleted, the key and the name become available and that's when we can do this change. But let me show you how to actually make the change. So the first thing you wanna do when you come in here is you wanna to go to project settings and this is a, a little bit of an optional step one, but it's only optional if your issue navigator is not enabled. So you wanna make sure that your issue navigator is enabled. You wanna make sure that that slider's turned to green because this is going to make life way easier. So we're going to slide that over. Okay. Once that's slid, and now that we have Issues Navigator available, when you go back to Project, you'll see, and you might have to refresh your screen here, but you'll see that Issues is now there. Now that's step one. So step two, though, is now we got to go make the destination project. So again, this is kind of going to explain how do we make a company managed project with similar parameters so that we're ready to receive these issues. So because I have a scrum based team managed project, I'm going to go ahead and come over here, hit the create project. I'm going to make a scrum template as well, but this time I'm going to pick company managed. And this time I'm going to say company managed destination project. Now I am not very creative, but here, most cases, you're probably going to want to name it the same thing as your team managed project. But again, you have to add like the word company or something a little bit more creative to indicate that they're the same, but not the same quite yet. At least not until the team managed project goes away. So once you have this set up, you'll hit create project and then your new project is now ready for delivery. So now we have to go back to the team managed project to migrate the move me project that I called it. And we want to go to issues and you want to be in here because once you're in this view, you'll see all the issues that are in the project. Now I should also disclose big, huge disclaimer no, number two or three at this point. This will only work for a thousand issues at a time. So what we're about to do only works for 1000 issues. So if you have over 1000 issues, you're going to have to figure out how to do this in batches where things are going to get very, very hairy for you is if you have the whole Epic story and subtask relationship, you're going to have to find queries. You're going to have to develop filters to make sure that your groupings basically preserve their relationships because you need to bring them all together at the same time. You can't send the stories and then the epics and then the subtests. Like they all have to come as a package deal or you risk losing the relationships. You could man you could just send them over. That's not going to be a problem, but you are going to lose the child parent relationship between the epic and the story and then the story and the subtest. So you want to avoid that mess and you want to send it all together at the same time. So how you do that though is a lot harder. So you do need to get clever with your filters. Okay, so back on the Jira side, uh, we are going to click the ellipses up here and we're gonna do a bulk change. This is gonna open us up a window where we get to select all the issues. Again, you're limited to just a thousand, but you'll notice that I have my epics and I have my move me issues over here. Next step is we want to move the issues. Now, big disclaimer here. You need to be an administrator in both the source project and the destination project because you need to have the ability to move issues in both projects. So make sure you are an administrator, a project administrator. You don't have to be like a, a Jira admin or anything like that. You need to be a project administrator in both projects. So even if you're like a site admin or an org admin, you might not be a project administrator in that new destination project or in the source project. So double check your settings there. Otherwise, you're going to be greeted with a nice little message that says you can't do this. Click next for the move. And then here's where it gets a little bit tricky. It's not too bad, it's manageable, but you do need to basically on the two here, you need to call it the new project that we're going to. So I'm gonna call it my destination project. 
Now the story one's easy. That one's always works really well. So all you gotta do is do this little manual work of just moving things down and just selecting the project that you're gonna go to. I do caution you here because this is a little bit of a mindless activity where you're just going down the list. It is very easy to fat finger or make a mistake here. So double check and take your time here. Make sure you're doing it correctly. Now when you get to the epic, things are gonna get interesting here. When I select my destination project, you'll notice that things got changed. It's no longer an epic to an epic, it's now an epic to a story. Be careful right here. You wanna double check and make sure you change that value that automatically changed on you. So if you're not paying attention, it's gonna change on you, right? So now that we know that it changed, I'm just gonna select epic again. Once you double check all your work, if you have tasks and subtasks, it's gonna be a similar thing. You'll click next. And then Jira's basically gonna say, okay, so now this is really the tricky part. Now what do you want me to do, right? So assuming that your workflows are the same, if they're the same, it's gonna be easy, but if they're different, then you're gonna to have to Rosetta Stone this thing. You're gonna to have to tell Jira, this is what my status was, this is what I wanted to be in the new project. So hopefully they're the same statuses, this will make things easier, but if they're different, you're gonna to have to go figure that out, okay? So you do this, uh, you'll just retain all these values here. And then for the Epic, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna use the same workflow. But this is where things get interesting for the Epic. This is the trickiest part, and this is really the part where you need a professional, or this video, which this is the reason why I'm making it. When you're doing the Epic, Epics behave different in a team-managed project than they do in a company-managed project. Most importantly, the most important value that you need to keep in mind is the Epic name. Now, if you don't do this, if you don't do what I'm about to do, where I'm just gonna put change me, then you're gonna have a really, really hard time figuring out the relationship between the epic and the story. Even though they're still under the hood preserved, you're gonna have a hard time doing it. So I recommend change your epic name to change me, okay? And this is gonna make your life a whole lot easier. So once you do that, click next, hit confirm, and then let Jira do its magic. It's gonna go and actually move the issues from that one project to the other. Now when it's done, you're gonna notice that you're gonna be brought back. Now this is sometimes a little bit buggy. You'll notice that I'm still in my team managed project to migrate. This used to freak the crap out of me the very first time that I did this because I'm like, oh man, it didn't work. But it's fake news. All you gotta do is hit refresh and you'll notice that it's zero, like it's all gone. So be careful there, don't freak out because it's it's just Jira not ca or caching the data or something. But the issues have indeed moved. So now the next step is you want to go back to your company managed project. And we're going to start wrapping this up. We moved all the issues. The sprints obviously not here, but they are back here on my board. So you can see that these are all my stories. These are all my epics. And if I go to issues, I should have 12, which I do. And so now comes the fun part. Now I'm going to be under issues. I'm going to go to type and I'm going to select epic because I only want to see the epics here. So this is really the part of these, this whole migration, this whole conversion, that is probably the most annoying because depending on the number of epics that you have, this is going to be like a five minute thing or it's going to be a couple of hours thing. And so what you got to do once you migrate all your issues is go to each of your epics and you're going to copy the title and then you're going to come to the epic name that we had named change me and change it so that the title and the, the epic name match. And you just need to do this for every single one of these. Now folks, if you have an easier way of doing this, please let me know in the comment section. I've been doing it this way for years. And if there's any efficiencies out there that I'm just not aware of, please, please, please let me know. But this is the best way that I know to do this, right? So I'm just gonna copy the name and go over here. Again, it doesn't take a long time, but a little bit of carpal syndrome might ensue after. But anyway, that's it. Once you do that, you'll notice that all my stories are beautifully nested underneath all my epics. And if I had subtests, I should have probably added subtests for this demo, but all those subtests would also be nested underneath the stories, given that they all move at the same time. So again, your biggest problem in all of this is going to be if you have over a thousand issues, logically moving them over is gonna be your biggest pain in your butt. So, your mileage is gonna vary there. Not a whole lot I can tell you other than you just gotta get very creative and ensure that your filters and stuff are set up in such a way that everything's being preserved correctly. And that's pretty much it. Once you do that, once you've moved everything over and you've done the, the new projects, all you wanna do is either 
shut down the access to the source project, that tmarsh project, or you can delete it if you're going to want to reuse the key or the name. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you found it valuable, please make sure you like this video. Make sure you're subscribed. If you made it this far and you haven't smashed the subscribe button, smash the subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or you need a little bit of help or guidance, let me know in the comment section below. And finally, please make sure you check out my paid courses. They are available. So if you want to take your Jira skills to the next level, whether you're a Scrum Master, you're a Jira Administrator, or you just completely need a Jira and you want to have a little bit more of a guided hands-on help, then I have a course just for you. All the information is in the description below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.